Well, welcome to uh, Swan's masterclass on how to do a paper batik, inspired by uh, the artist Vinnie Ellens, who's just posted his How to Paint a Tree. I thought I would do you a masterclass on how to do a paper batik. I'm doing that because Iona has asked me to paint a, a picture of Nashville at night, where she went on the holidays. And uh, if you've ever done watercolour, you know that painting scenes at night is difficult because you get you know, a lot of black sky and that sort of thing. So I thought, right, how will I do it? I, I could either, I could do a pastel on black paper and then I thought, you know, I could try a, a paper batik, which I've tried a couple of times before. Paper batik is an interesting, uh, if scary, technique and uh, the idea behind it is that what you do is you get yourself a drawing and then you colour it in with uh, pastel, nice uh, rich pastel colours and then on top of that you paint uh, gouache which is a, a water soluble uh, paint again nice bright colours on top of that and having done that you paste black India ink over everything over the whole thing you know as if you as if to obliterate it uh, you let that dry and then you take it into the shower with you and you shower your your drawing and because the, the gouache paint is water soluble the shower head will begin to dissolve that paint some of that will come off taking with it the black india ink that was on top of it and hopefully leaving you with <laughs> the, the picture that, that you'll hope you'll get which will have a lot of black on it where there wasn't any paint uh, and the rest will be pleasantly coloured. That is the idea. So it's a, it's a scary technique uh, where usually the best things happen by accident. So it's like watercolour, you know, when you're splashing watercolour on, you don't know where it's going to run. And the best things uh, usually happen by accident. So it takes a sort of thinking process, which usually screws up your picture if you're thinking about it too much. Uh, that's the idea. So let's have a look at how it goes. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, do a quick drawing and I'm going to use this, uh, this picture here from the internet as the as a source for the drawing since I've not been to Nashville. Um, the main thing for me to worry about in the drawing, the drawing can be quite rough because it's all going to be obliterated anyway by the, the India ink, but the main thing is I want to keep an idea of structure in that drawing otherwise it could just become a, a total chaos of colour. Uh, so probably the structure will be of black lines so when I'm doing the drawing I've got to think to myself what I'm gonna what am I not gonna paint and that's going to be the black lines which will probably sort of uh, help to give a, an idea of structure to the, the picture and uh, save it from being chaos. Okay, so I've done this uh, pretty uh, rough, loose, light drawing of the of the scene. It doesn't need to be good because uh, you're not going to see any of that at all. This is just going to be a guide for me. Uh, so the next stage is to try and get a lot of uh, this sort of bright colour into the middle of it because like, all this is going to be black. Most of it's going to be black down here, and those sort of key lines in the middle there are going to be they're going to be black as well. Um, so it should be fairly dramatic. So I'm using these uh, lovely pastels that I got from Sarah and Adam a couple of uh, Christmases ago. And I'm just going to try and sort of blast as, as much colour into this bit as I can. So I'll go on with this uh, and I'll let you see how I go on when I'll hear that. Okay, well I've been battering away at this picture for about an hour and a half or something now, putting uh, as much garish colour uh, onto it as I can. And I think I'll agree it now looks uh, fairly hellish. So the idea is that once the, the black goes on, it will sort of, uh, it'll, it'll calm this all down and that will sing nicely within a overall black picture. 
So the next stage now is to add the, the gouache paint and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll aim to put a fairly similar colour of paint on, on top of uh, what pasta is underneath um, because although the, the gouache will wash off, not all of it will wash off so some of it will, will remain on there and I might change some of the colours as well so that there's a, a chance for an accidental blend of the gouache colour and the pastel colour. As I say it's a, it's a kind of accidental process this and uh, I'm hoping it will uh, accidentally look an awful lot better than it currently looks because it certainly needs to. So I'll start the gouache after my tea. Okay let's start putting the gouache on. So I've got the gouache here. Um, so anything that I want to state as a black line, I can't put paint on. And anything I want to remain as a colour, I have to cover with, with gouache. So I'm kind of, yeah, I'm kind of thinking negatively, you know, anything that's in a leaf white is going to end up black. It's a bit like uh, when you're watercolour painting, if you want something to remain white at the end of the day, you've got to have planned that from the very start. So if there's a wee, a wee shine and a bit of plum, you've got to think to yourself, okay, I've got to leave that. I can't put any any colour in that at any time. Then it stays white at the end. So I'm sort of thinking the other way around. So I've got a, I've got a blue moon up here as a sort of homage to Nancy Griffiths. So this picture is going to be called Blue Moon Over Nashville. So I've got to cover that. So it's about like I'm wanting to come out a bit like stained glass, you know. I guess that's why I've got batik. Because you know, if I if I leave wee, if, I, if there's wee mistakes in my painting, I want there to be wee mistakes in it. So that uh, there'll be wee flecks and lack here and there. That will just help the, the colour to to highlight. So I see everything's in there. Everything is in the mistakes. All the good stuff is no me. All the all the good stuff is in the technique. So we cover up all this colour. And we'll see what happens. <laughs> well, I, I've now, uh, I think, covered everything that I want to remain not black. I've covered it in gouache. Uh, and I think it now looks perfectly hideous. So uh, hopefully this uh, paper batik technique will work and... Uh, once the, uh, the colour is revealed with the black, it will be a fantastic picture. However, uh, I, I currently hate it so much that it would uh, be fine to obliterate with black. I might uh, not even make the last stage of uh, washing it with water. I might just leave it black. But, uh, nah, I mean, you just hope that uh, these techniques work, you know. Whatever happens, you just keep on going and you see what you get at the end. Let's hope. Fingers crossed. Okay, black India ink. Here goes nothing. That's an improvement. That's the best it's looked so far. Okay, so that's it. Totally covered. So I could leave it that way as a, a Mark a Mark Rothko or a Casimir Malevich black square. But uh, tomorrow uh, I'll let it dry and uh, tomorrow I'll take it into the shower and uh, we'll see what we get. Who knows? Keep your fingers crossed. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see if I get in.
So there's the there's the finished piece. Um, I could go over it and work things into it, but I think it sort of gets the, the atmosphere I was looking for. So I think I'll just leave it. So there we go, and then a smiley. Blue moon over Nashville. Coming to you soon. In a very blue moon and a few one.